here are the basics of using the Erasermice OSC Toolkit or the Oscular Toolkit with Ableton Live and VDMX. First thing you're going to want to do in VDMX, be aware of your OSC setup. So we're going to go to Preferences and you'll see OSC Input Port 9200 is what I've set here. And you can create a new port and assign it to be whatever you want. And then output port I've assigned to 9100. So it's going to output OSC to this address, which is the loopback address in this case. If it was another machine, I'd use that IP address. And it's to port 9100. Okay, 9200 for receiving, 9200 for sending. Okay, now I have a simple uh, scene here, and actually there's uh, uh, some text going on on top of this uh, wireframe box. And I'm going to try to keep this simple. All right. I'm going to use a MIDI track. Let me uh, drop down some of these things. I have a simple MIDI track, and I'm just going to put some clips on there and affect this box. Okay. So the first thing I need to do is I'm going to put an OSC sender, and I'm going to use, let's see which one. I'll use the one IP sender, this one here. And I have um, one IP I'm sending to, and I'm going to send it to, what was the port? 9200, right? All right. I think it was 9200. We'll find out in a second. So we have the wireframe here. I'm going to click on what I want to control. I want to control the size of the box. And you'll see immediately, hopefully, my UI inspector will pop up and make sure that window is enabled. I'm going to say receive, detect, I can say detect anything or it could detect just the OSC, but I'll say detect. And I will change that parameter. And you'll see now the size of the box is changing. Okay. Now say I also want to change the phase. Okay. So I will then say receive, detect, and my next parameter. All right. So one changes size. One changes phase, and I'll do one more. I'm going to do cube twist. I could keep doing this all day if I wanted, I suppose. Receive, detect. Okay, so there's cube twist. Okay, now what could we do with that? All right, we have a MIDI clip here, and I'm showing envelopes. And now let's look at the first parameter. And I will give that sort of a little uh, sawtooth down kind of thing going on here. Oops, creating too many points. Put a sawtooth down at the beginning of the bar. Okay, I could slow that down just by doing that. And let's go to right, two. Messing with the phase, set it back to like zero at the middle there, and last but not least, I'm going to mess with the that rotation here, and we're going to get to be 50% in the middle, and we'll go kind of down and up. Back to 50% at the end. Okay, so my cube nicely explodes all over the place now. And I can create another clip, say, uh, L. I do option dragging there. And that's got all the original in there, but say I'm going to clear this part of the envelope. Clear. And I will clear this envelope. Clear. So now it's just size, trigger the other clip, and get everything. Okay, uh, really effective. You can do that with any type of track. And since a lot of the OSC tools are audio devices, you can embed them in audio, you can embed them in MIDI, and so on. Okay, so that's the simplest part of controlling 
OS, excuse, excuse me, controlling VDMX with Ableton. Now let's control it the other way around. So uh, let me on a uh, group track here that has some uh, drums. Hopefully here are some drums. Oops, nope, that's got some bass on it. Here we go. So here's my group track with drums. Say I wanted to control a filter according to uh, this effect that's going on over in here. Okay, you see how the frequency of that's going up and down. So maybe the frequency of the filter will go up and down. All right, so I go to the group in Ableton. I'm gonna drop a filter on there. So audio tools and auto filter, put that on there. And I'm gonna put a receiver on there. So I will call, it's just gonna be the one shot kind of receiver over here. I come over here, I go to frequency and you'll see in my inspector, I'm gonna say send and add a sender on there, make it an OSC sender out of port four. It's gonna send, what should I call that? Frequency, okay? And I say it's on port 9100, is that right? I'm betting it's port 9200. Maybe I'm not quite sending it. Frequency, OSC port there. I always like this side to get something crazy. Output port is 9100. 9100. I know what happened. Yeah. I have Macs still running, and sometimes if you've edited a device in Macs, it kind of reserves some of the UDP port mapping over there in Macs. So it's a little bit uh, weird, but once you get used to that and you know what's going on, ready? So now, yep, it mapped right away. All right, so you see how it's kind of just jiggling up and down just a little bit. Let's come over here again, frequency. And what you can do here, uh, we're sending a float frequency. Oh, I can't do math on the output side, that's unfortunate. So I'm gonna do it right over here. I'm gonna say, um, I'm gonna make my minimum value just a little bit higher up. And let's see here, let's see if that uh, does some stuff. I'm gonna say map to the frequency of that filter. So that's gonna jiggle up and down just a little bit. Maybe I wanna make the frequency over here a little broader. You can see that's uh, changing in both. And now if I play my drums, and I'll let it speak down a little bit more. It's a little sharper. Okay, so now my frequency is changing the frequency of my auto filter. Now those are two of the basic ways to change parameters back and forth in between Ableton and VDMX. Now the, one of the other big things you're gonna to wanna to do is probably clicker, clicker, clicker trips and scenes. No, trigger clips and scenes. Hmm. All right, so how do you do that? Well, let's see, I'm gonna turn off that device and that for now, and I'm gonna turn off that one as well. So we have uh, a couple of specific devices, and there's gonna be some other ones as well. Uh, this is really just meant as a, as a quick tutorial, not an exhaustive one, but um, I'm gonna use the OSC Clip Name Sender, and I'm gonna drop it on this track that has a whole bunch of clips on here, and these are just kind of vocal stabs, kind of some dub style things going on. Yeah, I was in kind of a very sort of dubby drum and bass kind of mood. And I'm gonna send indexes, and I'm not gonna send negative one on no clip. Uh, so I'll turn that off. Uh, since these are one shots, if, a clip, if no clip triggers, 
Normally Ableton wants to send a negative one, so just a, a no clip or you know something like that. So I'm gonna turn that off and now I'm gonna be sending indexes and I don't care about the track name and clip number. I'm gonna send the real simple version. So it's gonna just say like slash M4L, uh, you'll see here. M4L index one. And so on. Okay, so I'm gonna trigger these clips over here. And the way I do that is I go to my, now I'm gonna go to the workspace inspector instead of the, um, the user interface uh, and go to my left bin. I'm gonna say control trigger by index detect and it's set to 9100 like it should be. I get it backwards again. Do I keep doing this? Input port is 9200. <laughs> How many times can I get that backwards? I get nervous during these things. It's, it's tough. People, you're watching me doing what I'm doing here. Something like that. All right. Trigger by index 9200. Da 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 da. Detect. other window. Huh. Let's like select that window. That's kind of, let's crossfade in there. Watch this. problem I get like carried away the moment I start doing this I start mapping crazy things okay so that was the clip name sender so now Ableton's clips are sending triggers over to VMX okay now how do I want to how can I do like click triggering scenes or triggering clips from VMX all right for that I'm gonna quick uh, take a a scene receiver and scene receivers and clip receivers more or less work the same way. Um, so I'm just gonna use the trigger, the scene trigger receiver. I'm gonna drop that into the master. Oh, it's already there. What do you know, I left that over from last time. All right, I also have a monitor in here so I could use this to kind of see what was going on. So say, um, if there is stuff coming in from here, I would see it. If I get the port right. Alright, let's set this scene receiver up. Focus, Eric. Fo focus. Here we go. Okay. Left bin. Now I'm going to do right bin. Sending plus OSC output four. I'm going to call it scenes. And I'm not going to normalize it so I get actual scene numbers. Okay. Look at that again, one more time. No, nope, not live preferences. Whew. It's early in the morning here in New York. Um, OSC preferences, outgoing ports, so 9100. I'm gonna listen on 9100. Oh gosh, it's like, what is it, like seven in the morning? This is insane. All right, there, scenes. All right, so now as I trigger scenes over here, 
it's going to be attempting to trigger scenes over there. And why is it not? Let's see. Let me bring that uh, monitor in. You see some debugging going on here. So we'll say listen 9100. And you see the frequency over here going crazy. And scene one, scene two, scene three, scene four. Let me drag in a fresh one here. Because it might have been that I was editing things in Max and maybe things just are not quite fresh, so to speak. Okay. Scenes. That's what I get for editing my Max for Live patches and then doing a tutorial afterwards. Right, okay, so. There's the basics. So we're able to cl trigger clips from live and trigger scenes from VDMAX. And you can do the same thing. There are like clip versions as well. So you can get down to like individual track triggering and clip uh, triggering. Or even you can use the clip trigger on groups. So you can trigger groups and things like that. Uh, so that's just meant to give you a little indication as to how to do things. I'm going to leave it up to your imagination to see, you know, all the different things you can hook up back and forth, especially as you get into audio responsive things, because we have the envelope followers and the track level senders for all that sort of stuff. So you can do all sorts of great, you know, like really uh, tightly integrated, uh, you know, pumping text with video and the size of things according to the audio and all that kind of stuff. I'll leave that for you guys to uh, really experiment with. So until next time, this is Eraser Mice, and now uh, broadcasting live from Isotonic Studios. Take care. Bye.